everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. We've got all the sub-assemblies for our Tremec TR3550 overhauled. Now it's time to put the actual transmission back together. First step is to install the counter shaft. The front counter shaft bearing goes in this cup and gets pushed into the front of this case and it's sealed with this here o-ring. Now what I do want to do is because I machined the face of this, I just want to pop this in and make sure it doesn't stick out, but it doesn't, so we're good. So I'll get this thing greased up, the o-ring seal. And we'll pop it into its bore. And the bearing race goes in there. Now we're going to install the counter shaft. So it goes down in like so. There we go. Next in is going to be the counter shaft intermediate bearing. Just give her a little tap and make sure she's home. Yep. Next is to lower the reverse idler assembly down into there. And we have to make sure that the, the tangs on the thrust bearings engage with the case. So we'll get the shaft started in. Now we've got the pin most of the way through. We can lower the other thrust bearing in and put the pin the rest of the way home. There we go. And then you can see on the end, this little split pin pushed into the shaft, that keeps the shaft from spinning in the case. Now we're going to set the counter shaft end play, or at least check it. I think it's probably going to be okay. So for now, we're just going to drop this on there, and we're going to stick the fifth gear assembly without the fork, because it's got to come back off. We're just going to stick that on there. And then we're going to install the bearing. Now we drop our bearing on. Make sure it's seated. Then, there we go. The bearing goes here in the extension housing. And there is shims that go behind it, but we're not putting any shims in it now because we're just going to put this on and measure. And we'll install a couple of bolts. The factory spec for end play on this is zero to four thousandths. And I'm getting right now about um, 18. The original shim pack that was in there is 14 thousandths. Um, so this, what I measured was 17 or 18. That That's going to put us in the, in the zero to four range. So I'm going to Install these shims back in and we'll remeasure. It's really hard to see the needle move, but you can see there we've got two thousandths of end play, which is absolutely right dead center in the middle of the range. So we'll call that set. And we can feel it, it turns nice and smooth. Next, we need to install the reverse and fifth lever. And it gets held on with this here clip just like that. Next piece in is going to be the reverse shift fork. So it grabs the collar there and engages with the, the lever. There we go. Next we're going to install the fifth and reverse shift rod or shift shaft I guess. Now it's time to install the main shaft. They call it the output shaft. I call it the main shaft. Well, whatever we call it, it's in. Now we're going to install the thrust bearing, followed by the fourth gear synchro, and then the input shaft. 
This is a Torrington style thrust bearing. There we go. And then in this goes. And we just got to turn it around till the blocker ring engages the dogs in the synchro. There we go. Okay. Now next in is going to be the input shaft. So in order to do that, we have to grease it and then put the roller bearings in it. So getting this input shaft in, we've got to get the rollers over the spigot here on the main shaft. We've got to get these little teeth engaged with those little teeth, and these big teeth engaged with those big teeth. So it might be a little bit of jiggling and wiggling to make this all work, but uh, we should be able to, to get her in. There. So far, so good. There. It's in. Perfect. Next, we have to install the front and rear bearing races. Okay, so this goes in with no shims and will determine what we need. Now we have to install the front retainer. I think that's next. We don't want very carefully so we don't get it cocked or, or wreck anything. I'll be back when I've got that done. Now I have to install the tail housing. Sorry, can't really see what I'm doing. There's a little tab underneath here that catches the edge of the bench, so. You'll have to bear with me for a second here. Remember, because we machined the front face of the main housing, that is definitely going to change this relationship here. So, um, we'll see what we've got for end play now. Worst case scenario, I may have to make, um, I may have to make uh, a gasket to go behind the input retainer here to just give it a little space but we'll see they want us to have zero to four thou just like the other one I measured it and I got absolutely zero for a reading um, but I mean the thing turns quite nicely so I'd say we're probably right at that zero threshold but it just makes me a little bit uh, nervous not having any shim at all in there and the thing being at zero so um, I'm gonna pull the input retainer off and I may chuck it up on my lathe and just take a tiny smidge out of the back side of it or we might make a gasket for it all right I made a gasket out of my favorite gasket material a Cheerios box That'll shim that thing out a little bit and give us a little wiggle room for shimming. So now with our shim, I whack each end of it with a brass drift to set the bearings. And you can see now we've got about 13 and a half, 14 thou of end play. So we're going to start with probably a 10 thou shim and see where that gets us. See what we've got here now. 
So we're at 78. And we'll push it back. And we get up to 81. So we got three thousandths of end play. Um, that's perfect. That's right in the right in the factory spec. So we're gonna leave that there. All right. Now the manual says we can install our front bearing retainer for keeps. All right. Now the manual says we can install our front bearing retainer for keeps. But first we have to install a new seal. So here's our new seal installed with the lip facing the oil and we'll put this on. Um, there's no real gaskets on this transmission. Everything is done with sealant. But um, because we have a gasket here on the front, we're not going to use any sealer, just a little bit on the bolt threads. Another thing you can check to make sure you've got your shimming pretty good is you should feel just a tiny bit of axial play in the input shaft. That's perfect. Now it's time to install the fifth gear synchro. So first thing we have to do is put in another one of these little balls to lock our thrust washer into place. There it is. And then our thrust washer goes on. And now this time the fifth gear synchro goes on with the fork. It's a little bit of a dipsy doodle. Now we need to install the little pin that holds it all together. So we'll get a little punch and align it perfectly. There we go. That is our fifth gear installed. Now it's time to put the shift assembly on. We're closing her up, boys and girls. A little anaerobic sealant. Oh, here we go. It says to make sure everything is in neutral and drop her down. And make sure you catch everything. There, we've got those two. It's dark down in there. I'm just having a hard time catching the, the reverse and fifth lever. There we go. Look at that. Eight, nine, ten. Now make sure we've got stuff coming out all the way around, which means we'll have no leaks. And we've got stuff coming out all the way around. That's uh, super duper. Now it's time to install the tail housing. So we need to make sure these O rings are lubed up well. There's a dowel here we have to line up. There we go. Then we've got the proper original bolts. All right, still in neutral, that's something. So now we're gonna put in all of the shifter things. So 
long as I can remember what order they all go in. There we go. Okay, now, um, my little punch, and make sure they're all lined up. Yep, that's good. So, Knock all these pins in. One. Now, right now, everything is in neutral. What have I done here? Did I wreck this pin? Put it in the other one. Ow! There we go. And then I think this one uses the long pin. This one carries the long pin. There we go. We've got all our internal linkage back together. So now it's time to install the shifter. Now on the shifter, um, it's got a ball on the bottom. That's what operates it. And the ball fits in that socket there. In between there is a bushing. This is the original one. And there's a little slop in it. So we got a replacement one that fits nice and tight. So we'll knock that into there. Then we can install the shifter and see how she works. So now I'll install the shifter. I'm not going to put any, any sealant or anything on it, just in case we have to pop it back out. This is not the original shifter that this transmission would have come with. This is a Pro 5 Power Tower, which is a... Uh, short throw aftermarket shifter. I would be fine with the original one, but this is what we've got, so that's what we'll use. Okay, so how it works is this. Uh, this is one and two, three and four, and fifth and reverse. Or I, I may have which way they go backwards, but let's find out. You can see there, all our neutral gates are lined up. That's good. So let's put her in first gear. First, second, third, fourth, overdrive. Now we'll get it into reverse. There we go. So she works. She runs through all the gears nicely. We can go ahead, take this off, put the sealant on it, and reinstall it. I'm still a bit befuddled on where the breather goes. I've seen some pictures of TKOs and 3550s where there's a breather right there in the top of the shift housing, a little, you know, a little tiny breather screwed in. Um, obviously, there's nowhere for it here. Now, I do see this here, this little bung with a, with a, a plug in it. I, I guess we could put a breather there. Another option for the breather on a lot of old top loaders, this little tin cover on the top here just had a tiny little hole drilled in it there, and that was the breather. That could work too. So here's what I came up with for the breather. Um, hopefully there'll be enough room in the tunnel of the car. It's not really that big a deal. I will modify the tunnel if need be. But there's our breather. I'm happy with that. Now... We could put the two top covers on.
Now we can install the reverse switch and test it. I'll test it before I do the final tightening. So it should be dead now. We're in neutral. Yeah, now I'll put her in reverse. There you go. Meter's beeping. Good. I've gone ahead and installed the neutral switch. We probably won't be using it, but you never know. Um, but I have to test it. Now you can see one wire's broken off. We can fix that. All right, I've got continuity and neutral. We'll just stick it in a gear, any gear, and it should go dead. Yeah, good, it's dead. Now we're going to stick in the speedo drive. This is obviously no good on forged. Uh, this is part of the cable. But if anything, it just gives us something to plug the hole. So we will uh, get that in there. And put the crab on. And stick a bolt in it. Oh, my bolt might be too short here. No, no, there we go. It's all right. It's just to hold it for the time being, right? So that's fine. There we go. Perfect. And then we'll use the actual cable that's in our car. We'll just have to make sure it's got the right gear and stick it in. Now I can install the fill and drain plugs. I'll put sealant on the drain plug because hopefully it's going in to stay in. The, um, the, the fill plug, I'll just put it in dry because obviously we'll have to take it out to fill the thing. These are pipe threads, so you just put a little goo on them and tighten them up. And then this one can just go in like that dry. Snug it up a bit so it doesn't rattle out. There we go. Now we can install the rear seal. Uh, I found a suitable piece of uh, metal here, a little piece of pipe or something that we can use to knock this in. Now, uh, first thing we want to do is pack the seal. So there, if you can see the little spring in there, we don't want that flying out when we knock this thing in. So we just pack that cavity there with grease and that'll keep that, that'll keep that spring in place. All right, now you'll see here on top of this seal there's a little notch. And that means up because in the bottom of this bellows, you see there's a tiny little drain hole. We want that down. So if anything actually gets any oil actually gets out of there, it'll just harmlessly leak out. Come on. My seal installing skills are a little rusty, but we'll get her. I used to be a lot better at this when I was doing it every day. There she goes. Getting it started is the trick. Once it started, they go right in. There we go. Now it's ready for the drive shaft. One of the last things we have to do is set the positive stops in the shifter. They're here and here, and they keep you from going too far and, and putting undue wear on the forks. This one here, you can see it's it needs a little, a little tightening up, so we'll just loosen the jam nut. Holy Toledo! Oh, I need another wrench. All right, so we'll just wind it back a little bit. You just want it to just touch when it, like that. And it's okay if it's got a tiny bit of spring back, that's fine. <clears throat> okay, let's see here. 
Yeah, that's a positive stop. Now the back, you can see how far out it is. It's out to lunch. Woo! This nut's pretty bad. I think we'll be putting a new nut on there. That one seems pretty good now. Bang, bang. Okay, so now we'll check it in all the gears. We know it works in, in third and fourth. First, beautiful. Second, nice. Third, beauty. Fourth, yeah. And reverse. All right. Now we got to see about a booty for this thing. I got the shifter handle off. Now we got to get these studs out. We'll see how that's going to go. Oh, easy peasy. I scrounged around on the Google a little bit and tried to find out if there's a proper boot for this Pro 5 shifter. And I came up kind of uh, empty. I didn't really see anything at all. So all I did was order the, um, a stock boot for a TKO. And we'll see if we can make it work on this. I noticed that the TKO has a, a round um, spigot sticking out of it and this one is flat so we'll have to see now I did read somewhere that they said on these just use a TKO one and you can get it with a little silicone to slide over the flat lever so we'll see sometimes you got to put them in a pot of boiling water for a minute well, let's try it. I'll put a little silicone on here. And see if we can get this thing to slide over. Oh, it was so easy. Now, other thing is, is it going to be compatible with these positive stops? Next question I don't know the answer to. Hmm. Well, so far so good, eh? Well, there you go. For once Google was right. Stock TKO shifter boot does fit power tower. That finishes it off. They eh? will make sure it still shifts. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Man, this thing will make any car fun. I found an old transmission mount that bolted to it. I don't know if it's the right one uh, for whatever car I'm going to put this thing in, but it's a transmission mount, so it's there. Now we're going to get this thing attached to a bell housing. Our first test fit revealed a small problem. Um, because we machined the front face of the case, the shift cover actually touches the bell housing. Um, over at this end, it touches. And leaves air between the front of the case and the bell so we have to split it and just dress down the front edge of the shift cover just working it gently with a file you can see we're making progress there we are problem solved that's all good now there we are and then we just go around this is a one thou feeler gauge it goes in a tiny bit where I was filing, but it but it stops. That's good. 
Let's see if we can get her in over there. No, it doesn't go in. Does it go in here? No, it doesn't go in. So that's good. Well, there we are. It's all together. Um, a word about bell housings, if you haven't been keeping up with this story since day one. Um, this transmission, of course, with the input shaft that's in it, is in a, in a Windsor configuration. So, you know, 289, 302, 351. That, that's the configuration that these transmissions come because they were designed to go in a Fox body Mustang. If you want to bolt this on an FE, that's your, you know, 352, 360, 390, 428. Um, you either need to change the input shaft to the shorter one. The FE one is about a half an inch shorter. Or you can use this. It's a big, heavy cast iron bell housing, but it does the job. It's from a 65 to 76 truck with an FE engine. And trucks use transmissions that were in the small block configuration. So you put this thing on the back of your 390 and you can use any small block transmission. Um, the, the difference is literally that. This one is a, like a, a half an inch deeper than a normal FE bell housing that you would find like in an S-Code Mustang or a, or a, you know, a 390 Galaxy or something. But um, I'm hoping to put this transmission in my Galaxy convertible. We'll have to wait and see. Lucky for me, I've got a spare frame I can experiment with. I'm not too sure about the, the shifter. I kind of got a feeling this shifter needs to be here to work in the Galaxy. But we'll find out. Anyway, this has been like a two-year journey, this transmission. Wow. And we are at the end. The only thing left really to find out when it goes in a car is if our case repair is going to hold up. Um, even if it doesn't break, it may leak. The only only time will tell. Worst case scenario, we buy a new case for it because everything else we know is good now. Guess that'll do it for this one. Thanks for uh, sticking through it with me. Um, I hope you got a charge out of some of my unorthodox repairs, but I'm I'm pretty sure it'll all it'll all be fine. Anyway, until our next adventure. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't already, please down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell for notifications. And with that, I bid you adieu, and we'll see you next time on the Claremont Classic Garage. So long.